Mr. Hussein Isbell driving to his store. Mr. Lance uh, Kelly, good morning. Mr. Dave Carver, thank you so much. Regional Director, Ms. Evelyn Phelps, thank you so much. Regional Director, uh, Boss Lady, thank you so much. And we've got the Queen of New York on here today. Wow, I feel honored, got the Queen. Hey, I wanna thank all the leaders on the call today, those that I didn't recognize, but there's a lot of you on here today. Thank you so much. You know, we're back again with this young man who hails from Houston, Texas done a great job oh, before I talk about him but tonight at six o'clock tonight at six o'clock right back here excuse me I will be doing the one through ten the one through ten and then Miss Ismail will be doing a quick uh, start training right after that to get people pumped and get them going and what they need to do in their first couple days so tonight at six o'clock I'll be back to a one through uh, ten get your guests under tonight and a quick start training right after that every Tuesday and every Thursday Today, oh my God, we had him come back from last week. He did such a phenomenal job two weeks in a row. This is the third week. We had him come back, and he hails from Houston, Texas. He's a business owner. He's a successful gentleman in his own right, owns several different companies, joined ACM because he saw the potential of how he can mentor young people, not only young people, but mentor people to show them here's a, here's a business for a couple hundred bucks that you can get involved with that can understand the power of leverage, the power of residual income, which is other traditional businesses, and he comes from the corporate background, and he switched over to understand, hey, listen, no way I'm gonna make it is working for myself. So therefore, I am going to show and help other people become successful in the ACN opportunity. When I first met him in Houston, Texas, I went down and heard him talk and had a meeting and came down to do several meetings for him. He's not part of an organization, but I just love the integrity and what he stood for as a human being, as a man that understand the future and trying to help the younger generation understand here is a business that you can start from home and blossom into whatever you want to make it, but it, it really depends upon you. So we have the same philosophies about starting from the home. He has the same philosophy about helping people and also futuristic vision of why ACN has done so well and how you can too. So my dear friend from Houston, Texas, I uh, was shocked to see him with his nice full beard out, but he's a strong businessman. Take notes, get your journals out, and be, be prepared to get blessed because he's always got great information. Without further ado, from Houston, Texas, the great, the one and only Mr. Dwight Williams. How are you doing? Good morning, good morning, Mr. Thomas. How are you? I am blessed that I heard your voice. <laughs> there you are. There well, you are. We are blessed here as well. We are glad Thank to be here too today. I'm, I see I'm you at my favorite. Uh? You had, you're where? I'm at my favorite, I done found me in a little spot around the corner from my house. Uh-oh, you faded out. Sorry about that. Um, my wife and I, we, we bring our Kindles and we come here, we sit next to the lake and we read. So it's a quiet space, so I've been coming here. Uh, this quarantine thing is, uh, is a lot of fun. Interesting thing. Uh, <laughs> I tell my wife and I, we've been free for most of our most of our lives, and uh, and helping people get free. So uh, this is a really exciting. Uh, this is an exciting time for us because people are getting to see what it feels like to be free, and they're liking it. You know, the the, the workforce is concerned that a lot of people are not gonna. They're not trying to get uh, get their jobs back or trying to get a job. A lot of people are trying to figure out a way to stay home. And so, uh, so this is a great time, definitely in the business that we're building, because we're in the business of, of attracting attention. Well, there's a lot more people paying attention there. So as you probably have experienced in, the, in as building, you're probably getting a whole lot of attention right now. So uh, it's got to be really, it's really, it's exciting for us. It's really, really exciting. So, and I'm sure it is for you guys as well. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Oh, okay, good, good. So what yeah, are we talking we're, about we're, today? Whatever your heart leads you to, you know, you, you have a heart for helping. And I want you to share a little bit about your heart for helping and why you, a successful businessman on several businesses with business partners in some of the businesses, spending quality time with your lovely wife around there, you're, date, you're dating around the lake where you got your uh, reader out, she got her reader out. You guys are probably sitting in the car holding hands. See, that's what I'm talking about, about being free. And people don't understand about being free. It's not just money's dollars and cents, but it's spending quality time with the people you love 
and you guys have been married. How long? Have you, tell everybody a little bit about your family. How long have you been married? How long have you been with your wife? How y'all meet? Uh, interesting. So uh, we met because uh, we had relatives that worked together, and uh, both knew that we were both uh, kind of in the market, and uh, uh, and the timing on it was interesting. Is I had a cousin that recommend that work with her uncle and the uncle's sister, her mom says, Hey, do you know any guys that my daughter can start talking with? And, uh, he recommended that we meet. And so we got in the car one weekend, drove down to meet each other. And she and I, uh, started dating and we've been together ever since that was probably 35 years ago. 35 years ago. Wow. Yeah. Folks, you know what? I've always learned that if you want to talk to somebody successful, have a great relationship, talk to somebody who's been together a long period of time. They've got a lot yeah. of insight. They can tell you what to do and what not to do. And I really respect, and that's another reason why I respect you so much. And Because not only are you just a, a, a man with several businesses, but a man that loves his wife, loves his family, and are there. And then to be a great woman, to let you go be the man you need to be, to help other people take it away from her a little bit, but she knows your mission. That's one thing I was talking about Friday night, uh, no, Saturday night on, on, on about being a true leader. A woman or man must understand their mate's mission. And that's so important, the mission. And she understands your mission. And that's why you guys have been together so long because she understands who you are as a man and what you're out there to do to help more people, to bless more people. So I'm, 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 I, I know she's very proud of you. I know you're a friend of mine, and I'm, I, I just gravitated to you because you have all those qualities that gives balance in a man and a woman's life that people don't have today. They're so busy running after this or running after false things, the exterior, not the interior of a person, but building something worthwhile that's going to be long-lasting and standing. 35 years ago, that's commendable. That's commendable, yeah. sir. Yeah, yeah. We've been wow. officially married for 33 years as of January. We made our January, 33 years. Wow. Wow, wow. And I know she's sitting right next to you, so have her wave at us all. <laughs> no, she's not with me right now. She's uh, okay. she's taking care of some other things, but we'll probably be back later on today though. So uh, uh so but you brought up a great you brought up a great conversation. So this is a good place to pick up from where we left off last week. I took some time there was a gentleman that was on the phone that asked a question about faith. And this we're gonna go a path from here. Um, uh, I, to think about it, because you made a statement earlier about uh, building, and I've been thinking uh, about, about what you're doing here every day, how you're building these organizations. So I, I really wanted to, because often I say, I have a statement that says, we often don't know, can you hear me? Can, uh, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, we are, I have a statement that I always say, we often don't know how one one thing connects to another, but it's all connected. My partner has a statement that everything is one thing because everything culminates into a single, who you are as a person and who you become. So uh, the gentleman asked, you know, about faith and faith is um, either as, as easy as faith is, faith is the key to everything. Um, uh, because faith is simply, most people say, I, and I made the statement last week, most people say, I want to be at the peak of that mountain. They're at the base of the mountain, they're looking up and they say, I want to be at the peak of that mountain. And they sit there for years saying that that's where they want to be, instead of just starting to climb. Because if you climb long enough, eventually you'll be at the peak of the mountain. And and that's often what we do. We, we, we spend all of our time talking about the things we want. Um, uh, uh, Les Brown has a statement that want shows up in conversation. He says, but uh, uh, expectation shows up in behavior. So when we expect something that we're going to get it, you see that expectation illustrated in what expressed in what people do. What we do is what determines what we are really have decided, not what we say. Um, so, uh, faith is really the simplest thing and, and, and we're going to, 
watch this path because I want us to, one of the things you always say stuff, I'm going to tell you, you always say stuff that brings it out of me. I'm going to just go ahead and tell you that right now. <laughs> you bring it up. So, um, uh, uh, think about this. My favorite book tells an account uh, of, of, of a man being, building an ark that had never seen rain. That is the, that is the, that is the effective example of faith. Faith is doing things that you ain't, you haven't seen before. You just, but you take steps, you take action without seeing the results yet. So there are many leaders on this phone right now, on, on, on this call right now, that have dreams of becoming vice presidents in this company. Have you seen it yet? You have not. But the, but the faith is that I get up every day and I take action every day as if it's one day away. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. And I execute behaviors that lead me to that place. It's like a farmer. The majority of the seeds that a, plant, a farmer plants never make it. But he plants multiple seeds knowing that X amount will get planted and become a harvest. But how crazy would it be for him to wait till the harvest shows up for him to start building a barn? Faith is me building barns in preparation. So most people think I'm gonna get out here and I'm gonna build my ACN business. No, you're not. What you're gonna get out there and do is start planting and lay and, and planting seed and nurturing seed. The increase is not my favorite book says we plant and we water or nourish. That's what we're supposed to do. We get out there and meet people. We meet them where they're at. We find out what their needs are. We, we begin to help them where they are at as much as we possibly can where we're at. And that's what we do. We invest uh, our relational capital in other people. And we, we don't try to orchestrate the result because the book says that you plant, you water. I give the increase though. The increase comes from me. So that person that becomes your next re regional director or vice president, you don't know who it's going to be, but that's not what you're out here doing. You're out here helping them, knowing, believing by faith. We talk about faith all the time. Is I'm not going to do it until I know how much money I'm going to have in the bank. Well, you won't be doing much. <laughs> Let's go. You won't, you won't be because you don't know where it's going to come from. You, you can't, nobody, life is not supposed to tell you where, where your next VP is going to come from. Faith is you taking the steps and doing the things you know are the right things to do, believing that if I do that, I'm going to reap on the other end. And so I'm looking at you right now. You, it's the ultimate example. I'm watching you do calls morning, afternoon, and evening, even taking up your weekends to develop people. This is where you want to be in life. You, you don't want to be, you don't want to spend your entire life paying the next bill. You, you, don't want to, you don't want to go through life taking care of just yourself. You don't want to go through life just taking care of your family. There's a, there's a movie, 10,000 BC. It's one of the statements I tell my son. And it, it's a, it, there's an interesting scene in the, the, the mentor is sitting with the mentee and he's, he's helping him to understand his destiny. He says, he says, there are three kinds of men. There's a good man, he says, that draws a circle around his immediate family and he takes care of them. He says, then there's, there's a great man that draws an even larger circle to include his extended families and associates and loved ones. He says, but then he calls him the rare man. Who has the who draws a circle so large that he includes those who lack the will to defend themselves. So when you look at the business that we're in, relationship marketing, that person that has the ability to draw a circle so wide, meaning he invests relationship capital in so many people that at times randomly through his life, those things begin to give him returns that person is gonna build a massive organization because this business is based on how many people you invest in, not how many people you get from or take out. And so when I watch you doing this day after day after day, constantly investing, even to the point <laughs> where, where, I mean, helping and working
working with people can be a frustrating and challenging task. But when a person is frustrated, that's a person that cares. If a person that you're dealing with never gets upset with you and he's developing you, then he really don't, he's really not that concerned about the outcome. But when I see people who invest emotional capital in me, who are really frustrated, get upset with me, that person is concerned about my welfare. And so um, uh, it's, it's, it's an admirable thing. It's, it's uh, very much so. So um, I, guess, I guess that's, uh, that's where uh, more so than talking about if you've developed anything, Faith puts aside your own concerns and cares. You don't really worry about that anymore because you have faith to believe that you're going to be good. So now, if I know that I'm going to be good, so the thing I really need to focus on is I need to be in the right place at the right time, always doing the right thing. Because I'm not concerned about the outcome. I'm not worried about, am I going to eat today? Or am I going to sleep? Even my, my favorite book says, don't concern yourself with that stuff. Where are you going to eat? Where are you going to sleep? It says, hey, Solomon is all his glory. He could dress himself better than I could dress a flower. He says, now you think I can't take care of you? I got you. So now if you knew I have you and you good, then what would you do with your time? Where would you invest your time? And I watch you invest your time with people. That's the right place. It's the right, that's Thank the you. right place to be putting your time. Thank so you. you brought up myself. We have, my wife and I have had the rare privilege of spending a large majority of our time helping build other people. And it has paid off tremendously. Well, ACN is the kind of business you can do that at a magnitude greater. So I'm looking at young people in their 20s and their 30s who are building relational cap. They don't even know how this will, how they will reap from this years into the future. So I, I just, I, so which is what excites me about what we're doing and where we're at right now. There's a, there's a tremendous opportunity right now because a lot of people are concerned and, 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 and are uncertain. We have an opportunity right now to just distribute a massive amount of relational capital into this situation, bring a lot of hope to a lot of people. I like how you use that word, relationship capital. And I, I, you know, the thing that I think that you're blessing people with this morning, Mr. Williams, is more people, they have to see some instant, they don't understand, investing. And we, 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 you know, there's three questions that I tell people when they look at AC. Number one, can I do it? Yes, I can do that. Number two, they look at what is it going to cost me? And the third thing they're so short-sighted on is when can I get my money back? Rather than looking at it as an investment over time to build a large organization and a, a, a something that, that, that will take care of you and your family. And, and that's one thing I really want people to understand. It's just not about just getting your money back. It's about investment in your future. Mm -hmm. You speak along, along that basis. Uh, interesting you bring that up because that takes us to the, to, to the next place. Um, uh, once again, uh, when, when you find yourself positioned in the right place, you will, uh, uh, things just seem to work to just work out for you. Uh, here, here's, here's a perfect example. Um, right now, I, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, the wealthiest 5% of people in America just amassed $143 billion in the last month. If I'm not, I think that's the number. I think the number is $143 billion. Um, they, they didn't do that at work. They, they did that at home. <laughs> and so um, what, 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 what I really, what we should really understand is that if you're, if the majority of your work is not between your ears, if both, if both what you do, what you're doing and your growth and development isn't between your ears, 
then you're behind the and and here's and even beyond that if you don't have an appreciation for growth and development between your ears then you're you're you've got to make a change very fast because physical labor cannot scale fast enough to match where we are today and at some point there's going to be a gap so big between those people who are working class and those people who are not, who are beyond working class that it's going to be near impossible to cross over your opportunities that face you today with acn even are going to create a gap there's there's going to be a group of vice presidents in a company like acn that's going to create a wealth vacuum that that is going to change the dynamics it, it's it's going to happen i'm telling you when you're watching people go to work people still gonna need cell phones they're gonna still need electricity. They're gonna still need those services. And they're not gonna want, they can't go to the Sprint store. <laughs> Sprint is not gonna let them in. So you, you think some kid sitting in his bedroom is not gonna facilitate that transaction? He absolutely will. And he's not gonna get a one-time payment like they get at the Sprint store. He's gonna get a residual payment for the next 12, 24, 36 months. So we really, you've really got to embrace You've really got a challenge and say, yes, I know that's what my mom and my dad did, my grandma and this person did, but is there the chance that something is changing, that I may want to embrace this change? That's where we're at. You've really got to open yourself up and say, you know what? I have the courage right now to do what everybody around me is going to say cannot be done. And you, you have to. I'm really challenging you right now to really embrace that and do it otherwise because i because mr thomas and myself the same i want to see you get stuck on the other side of that that gap i do not but I, I, i'm watching dynamics that are wiping out the middle class in such a yeah. way that um, it, it, it's almost like that it's it's, it's almost like like the like there's a set of dynamics trying to create a group of people who will never ever emerge out of the working class mode so for example that means if i'm on the other side i know i can start a business and know that there will always be a population of workers that will have to work for me who will never ever become a threat to my to to, to my status and and that's a problem for me. Uh, you know, go ahead. I'm going to jump in. Jeff Basil just uh, are hiring 100,000 people. And that's exactly what you're talking about. They'll always be workers. He's getting wealthier and wealthier and wealthy. He's number one wealthy person in the world right now. But he's hiring people on low end to do all the stuff in his, his factories, you know, his buildings. I'm encouraged. You know, the book, Who Moved My Cheese? I'm trying to tell people, read it. Your cheese been moved. Mr. Von Temple told us it was on, you could go listen to it on YouTube. You know, this morning I sent my text message, and Mr. Williams, I'm going to send it to you. I sent a text message this morning about the wealthy and getting wealthier, and it's just, you just, you just scroll by it, and it's just amazing how far you got to scroll to see how much wealth, $146 billion in wealth Mr. Basil has. So I sent that out to my, to my group this morning. It's amazing. You know, and, and, and then again, courage just like we got gentlemen in line from iowa patience he's on here brand new ibo this guy's gonna be some of the record where he's come from africa and i asked him i talked to him the day driving you and i always want to know what's driving people this guy has such a big why he will be a senior vice president you're going to watch his rise in this company i i, I asked the sponsor the day how's he doing getting qualified he needs one or two more points i says get him qualified and watch that man rise because he has a no quit attitude because he comes from another country he doesn't let nothing stop him. We get yeah. so discouraged because my best friend, cousin, uncle, they didn't want very much in life. But I love his attitude. Love his attitude. It's back well, to you, I'm, sir. I'm, I'm glad we're having this conversation. And so let's talk. Let's, let's just really get down and talk. I have this conversation with my son all the time. I said, son, uh, you're not going to be able to compete with somebody that had not had as much as you. So you, you better figure out how to kill to eat. You, you can't rely on mom and daddy to take care of you and compete with a kid that's coming out of an environment where he spent every day surviving, protecting his life. So he comes to America and he's going to college 
and he, and they're talking to him about an all nighter pulling an all nighter so he can so he can change his life, change the trajectory of his life. An all nighter. He's like, forget an all nighter. Let's talk about an all weeker. I'll stay up all week <laughs> to compete. Well, no, we got to go out and party on Friday. Y'all go ahead. That's fine. I'll be getting the job that you were supposed to get. And see, that's the dynamic that we we comfort is the killer of human progress. It is it, it's it it is the enemy of human progress is comfort. Uh, and so we we got to avoid. Um, but it's it's human nature, isn't it? Uh, we are creature we are creatures of comfort. We seek we and we set up systems and behaviors in our life that produce comfort for us. But the problem is, we should be instead of creating comfort, we should be disrupting everything. We shouldn't wait till coronavirus shows up to disrupt our world. We should disrupt our own world. Because that's how new values and new systems and new opportunities are discovered when you break up the earth. When you break up the dirt, that's how you create new life. Same thing you have to do in your life. To cultivate growth in your life, you have to disrupt all of this comfort that you have. Sitting in, I don't have a problem with you watching television. I mean, that's your choice. But me, I'm going to tell you, the thing that sits in the back of my mind I, I, I don't want to die and not experience everything God placed in me because I wasted my time doing things counter to my destiny. I tell my son, I, I, I tell him all the time, I say, son, if you waste food, you're going to be hungry it, because for whatever you waste, you will one day want. If you, if, if you waste money, you probably end up be, being broke at some point in your life. I said, and that's fine because you can get those back. He said, I said, but son, the one thing you do not want to waste is time. Because the time you waste, you will regret. And regret is something you never want to deal with. You want to avoid regret. And so you don't want to look back on your life and say, man, I would have. I wish I could have. I wish I had her. You don't want to do that. And so, to, but it requires discipline in the moment to say, man, let me get up from here and go do what I've got to do. But what happens is we say, man, I'm just, I'm just tired right now. I just want to just binge out. I just want to relax. And don't get me wrong. Leisure has its place. But in a disciplined world, leisure fits relative to my destiny. So I'm measuring the amount of leisure that I take why? Because I'm focused on where I'm trying to go. And so uh, I, I, really, I really challenge us right now that uh, push, man, this, this, is the, this is the greatest opportunity. My father's generation never saw opportunity like this. Think about it. Everything, I said this last week, everything is cheap right now. Mm -hmm. Everything's cheap. And let's not talk about real estate. Real estate is soon to be cheaper, which brings up the, 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 the next conversation. So when I look at Mr. Thomas, and I know Mr. Thomas, it, <laughs> it must drive you nuts, man, because I look at it and, and I understand. I know you, you've moved away from your income statement. You, you've moved to your personal financial statement or your balance sheet because you have assets now. You've got real estate, you've got commodities, uh, you've got probably got Bitcoin. You, you, you've built a balance sheet that gives you. And so I think what happens is many of us don't realize that what you're doing is let me get them to a place where they have a passive income stream. Once I get them to a passive income stream, I'm going to teach them how to build wealth. Come on now. Woohoo! <laughs> Because to build wealth, you can't be producing the money with your own hands. That's right. You can't create wealth that time. You, you, the only way to truly create wealth is with leverage. You've got to have something working. You've got to, you've got to go out, produce a dollar, and then make that dollar go produce 10 more dollars. So, but until you have a passive income stream, a, an income stream that pays your bills and produces surplus in such a way that you can now put that surplus to work because nothing multiplies 
itself more than money itself. Nothing multiplies more than money. You can't outwork a dollar. You cannot. I can tell you right now, in the last, in the last, since Steve Jobs came back, a dollar in Apple has made more money than any employee, any average employee in America could ever have made in any career. It has. Why? Because the power of leverage is, is not only multiplication, but it's exponentiation. And you can't match that with your own hands and legs. And so, and what I, so I watch you with your team, you're pushing to get them to passive income. And then I can tell, I already know your next thing is going to be, guys, we're going to cut all your income to your bare expenses. Well, Mr. Thomas, why would I do that? Because in the next two years, you'll have 10 rent properties. that are going to be producing you more income. And then we're going to take that money and we're going to invest it in something. Well, why would we do that? Because then it's going to produce even more income. And then what are we going to do after that? We're going to cut your expenses again because <laughs> we're going to take the surplus and we're going to reinvest. And every single cycle, will perpetuate wealth in your life. That's how it's done. And, uh, and, I, and so I see you in the beginning stages, but I tell you, uh, I have people in my life right now, young men that I never thought would ever make it. And, and I even question to this day, my wife and I spent five years bringing this young man, and it's a group actually, we had a team, but this young man in particular, and for five years, this young man came into our house at least three or four or five times a week. And I'd spend time training, mentoring, developing. But today, he is free in a way that most people never experience. He's not concerned about work. Uh, he's not concerned about wealth and income. His daughters are both doctors. And his son is in school to graduate. The and to have had and to have invested and to be able to say that you have some small con contribution to that it is worth more than any amount of of money that i could have produced Huge. that is the that is the most valuable thing and so everybody on this call when you get to a place where your wealth is perpetuating where you now have the time and the resources to go invest in other lives. That is the reason for all of this. It's not just to create, get a house, sit on a lake. And I promise you, if you get a house with any car you want sitting on a lake and you sit there every day drinking a cup of coffee, that you will not be, you won't find much happiness in that. Uh, so what I see Mr. Thomas doing, and, and, I, and I see the passion in him doing it, and uh, I'm telling you guys, you got to hang in there. You got to go the full route. You got to get to VP. You got to get there fast because that's only the first step. Because to get where uh, 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 Mr. Al Thomas is, it's more than just producing a single passive income stream, but that's where everything starts. That's where it all starts. And most people, I assure you, most people on this planet, 95 to 99% never achieve that starting goal. And that's creating wealth, creating income independent of my own direct hands and legs. That's step one. You have to do that first. So, You know, Mr. White, uh, Dwight Williams, it's so important. There's so many people. It's like, I got to get up. You, man, you, I got to get them to that first level as creating that residual through ACN to be able to springboard them into the next level. And I see so many of them have it, but I got to get them there to talk about other things, how to Absolutely. use leverage, how to use resistance. See, my three billionaire mentors gave me two quality words, leverage, ASIN has it, residual income, ASIN has it. But we haven't really dug in and capitalized, like you said, I took my notes, you, every one of you need to push harder to get to RVP, to get to S. You haven't even started living yet. You have no idea the next level. Remember the other day I trained on four types of money? Number one, survival money. That's the guy in the corner trying to sell you something to make some money to put diapers on the table in the bad part of town. Number two type of money. What is everyday money? Everyday money. Number three money type of money is investment money. I'm trying to get y'all to understand that. Yeah, I got involved with ACN. That's just one part of investment money. There's so many different levels of investment money that we can't even go to level three, four, five, six. Y'all ain't ready yet. And then the fourth type of money is what kind of money is it? 
FU money. And it ain't FU like you think it. It's called Fun Unlimited. And that's what he's talking about. But I can't take you to that fourth level because some of you barely got in the business and you barely, barely, barely want to invest back in your people. Very, barely invest back in your business. You ain't made no serious money yet to invest in other things. That's the key. Because I want to see all the number four level of money. Because money has different levels. And the first time I taught it, people were like, I didn't realize that. Of course not. Who you've been listening to. Back to you, Mr. Williams. So it, it, it's a challenging conversation when you have when you sit down with somebody and they say to you, uh, and you're presenting an opportunity like this, and it's not just a challenge for them, it's a challenge for us. So when I'm talking to a young person and I'm, I'm, I'm presenting the opportunity and that person looks at me and says, nah, I, I'm good where I'm at. And you know they're not because they don't understand these things about money. I think to myself, I've got to improve how I tell this story. I got to, uh, because something, I didn't, I didn't communicate this per, to this person well enough that they understand that they're not good. You're not good. You don't have all the pieces that you have a dream that is achievable. You have an actual, an achievable dream, but you do understand that the path you want, you're on, you won't get there in your lifetime. So, so, and, and, and but you very well can, but you've got to open up your mind to receive things, new ways of thinking that, that will get you to the dream. And so, um, the dream that you have, all of us have, is achievable because in, in many cases, as our, as our goals and our, objective, our objectives develop, these are our destiny. We were created to do these things. I mean, some of us get scared of the dreams we have. They're so big, and, and some of us are scared to have money. There, I know people that's, I, I watch their behaviors. They, they, they sabotage themselves when it comes to money. They make so much money, it scares them to death. But the truth is, because that's because you don't understand money. When you're, when money, uh, the, my, my favorite book says that God gives us the ability to attain wealth. And if that's the case, then I have this money because of him. I just got to, I got to be listening to him and what to do with it. I, he just, I've just proven that I'm a good manager of money. That's why it's coming to me. Well, how do I know that? Because I got in this business. I met with a bunch of people. I planted seeds everywhere. I nurtured relationships everywhere. And now he's increasing me. Why? Because I've been faithful. I've done the things that I believe. I was faithful. And my faithfulness has now got all of this harvest now that's starting to bud and to, and, 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 and to blossom in my life. Now what do I do? Oh, no worry. Don't stop listening to me now. <laughs> that's, that's, you definitely don't want to do that. So now I'm going to tell you what to do with it as well but you're going to get to use some of it for yourself. Yeah. But you couldn't, even if you used it all, you, you couldn't use it all on yourself. So I'm not telling you to live this pauper's life. I'm telling you to represent me well, but at the same time, you got enough resource to change not only your life, but generations of lives and, and communities of lives. That's what this is about. So when a young person looks me in the eye and says he's good, that means that what that translates to me is he knows nothing about money and wealth. And so how do I communicate in such a way? And that's our responsibility is to become really clever in how we communicate. And the, and, and, but the driving force has got to be about them and not about us. And if, if we start there, if our conversations are about them, we, we just improved our chances of success uh, 100%. Uh, uh, so <clears throat> yeah, I'm... Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. No, 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 you're right. Money, see, money is just a tool. People don't understand it. It's a tool. It's a tool. It is absolutely a tool. That's it. It's just a, it's just a, a byproduct. Matter of fact, I was, I was talking to somebody yesterday. It's just a contract between two people. And we've agreed that a dollar represents X amount of my time. And, and that's it. And the paper exchange, just simply, I just, I just gave an extra, I, I just traded. So let's say, for instance, somebody gave you a dollar for, for 15, uh, let's say you make $10 an hour. So if somebody gave you a dollar for 10 minutes of your time. Let's say I make $20 an hour. Well, somebody just, you gave me that same dollar for five minutes of my time. Uh, <clears throat> well, no, the opposite. So let's say somebody gave me a dollar 
for five minutes of my time. I give you that same dollar for 10 minutes of your time. I just doubled my money because I got twice the amount of time for the same dollar. Exactly. And that's so really twice the more. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Absolutely. And so that's how money works. So that dollar is just a contract between two people to exchange the goods and services. That's it. That's mm -hmm. all it is. It, it, the paper that is written on is, is near worthless. Uh, right. It's fiat money. Fiat money. But people don't understand what fiat, fiat money is. Money. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's not backed by nothing. Since 1971, the Nixon took off the gold standards. Money is only what you believe it to be. But it's not backed by anything. It's fiat money. That's why it's losing power. People of wealth understand it ain't worth nothing. That's why so many people work for it. The first rule of wealth I've taught my kid is wealthy people don't work for money. They have money work for them. Well, that's another subject. But but because <laughs> we can get real philosophical on that. But here's what we're trying to get across to you guys. You have a responsibility to get out to talk as many people to help them build an asset. See, ACN is an asset. And you know what I'm gonna do Friday night? No, I'm gonna do Friday. I'm gonna talk about I'm gonna blow your mind on Friday, so Friday night, my my happy hour. I'm gonna blow your mind with show you an asset. I'm I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna really get down to how you don't even know the value of what you work. You have no idea. You don't even know what you're worth because you listen to the wrong people. Matter of fact, I've already got the message. I was gonna get Friday night, get on here Friday night. I'm gonna blow <laughs> your mind and show you you don't even know what you're worth because you're not even understanding the value of what you got in this business. When I get done Friday night, shh. <laughs> yeah, you don't you you let, you let these little jokers out. Oh, that, I'm I'm good. They don't know what they're saying no to, because you don't know what you got. They yeah, no. That's like me in a fight, and my and the Lord is oh, never mind. Let me be quiet. Let me I, before I go off on the rift of scale here. But the reason why you haven't got after it because you don't believe it yourself, and you have no idea how to value what you got. So Friday night on happy hour, get ready. Get ready. Because you know what? Just that one asset, my ACM business, I know what the value of it is. Mr. Williams, I'm sorry. Give us a few words in closing before I start going off like a madman again. <laughs> well, I'm, 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 I'm going to be on there on Friday night. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> to, to, to be, because they don't. Um, uh, my son, um, my son just graduated uh, from college. This was his, uh, he graduated this past weekend. And, um, and I told him, I would, he, he gets a check from ACN and, uh, but he built his team. Uh, he's been, he's taken the last two years off, but he built a large team and uh, he's been getting a check from ACN. So I take the opportunity every time his check comes in and I go to him upstairs or when he's working in the office and I'll slide that check to him and I'll say to him, son, I want to make something clear to you. Your grandfather never had an opportunity like this. It didn't exist in his time. You, so don't live in your grandfather's world when a world like this is available to you. Why would you live in a world 60 years ago when you've got a world that has advanced 60, a magnitude 60 years into the future where your grandfather was climbing up poles, putting in wires. Now, People are sitting in rooms on wireless cell, cell phones and creating wealth many times more than your grandfather ever could have. So <clears throat> I want to challenge everybody on the phone to not to, to embrace it first. You, you have to first embrace it and believe it yourself, because the most difficult thing to do is to sell something that you don't believe in. Um, th that's not easy to do. Um, so many of us will have challenges with a business like ACN if our faith hasn't convicted us in, in, in it. And that will be expressed. I tell people the expression of a person's faith is in what he does. So I know what you believe, not by what you say, but by what you do. Like Les Brown said, want shows up in conversation, 
but expectation shows up in behavior. So I know what a person is expecting to have in their life by the, what they do. And so um, the only, it's hard to build a team if your belief is expressed opposite counter to what you're saying. So uh, I, and th th this is, th th I, I, I grew up in, uh, Al, I grew up in church. So, uh, but I, I, because I grew up, I, I challenged everything about it. And I was an entrepreneur. And so that's what entrepreneurs do. We don't just accept anything. And so I would always see my mom talk about this word. Many of us may be familiar with holiness. She was like, holiness, holiness. And I'm like, what is that? Does that mean? I don't think that means what they say it means. And what you'll discover is all that means is that uh, what you say and what you do are integrated. They're in alignment with each other. That means that you don't say one thing and your life reflects a different thing. So holiness means complete alignment, spirit, soul, and body, that you're whole, that, that all three components are in full alignment with each other. So when you're building a team, people believe in people who believe. So me building a team is easy because why? I believe in what ACN is doing. You couldn't convince me other. That's why I, here's an interesting conversation. I was talking to one of the people in our business a few weeks ago, and he says, Dwight, man, stay away from other network marketers. I'm like, why? Why should I stay away from other network marketers? He said, because they're, they're going to try to get you in their business. I said, that's it. Why, why don't I want that? I mean, what? He's like, what? What do you mean? I said, dude, they're never going to convince me. But on the flip side, <laughs> <laughs> if I give you audience, <laughs> you're going to have to be crazy enough to give me audience. And when you do that, it's going to be a high chance you'll be signing up in my business. Because <laughs> why? Because I'm convicted. I, 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 I can show you things about ACN and this business that are undeniable. They're just undeniable. So you got to believe. So Nothing, none of that bothers or concerns or scares me because they couldn't convince me if they wanted to. And I, I, when we joined this business, we took our time. We knew what we were looking for. We were looking for ACN. So, uh, so when we found it, it was the thing we were looking for. Uh, most people say, well, what about other businesses? I had a young guy that I had mentored that's a multimillionaire in, in network marketing right now. And he tried to get me in his business. He ain't cooked. Took me to his mansion, had him cook, his chef cook for us, did all of that. I, I, but I knew what kind of business I was looking for. So it's not, we're not easily convinced. When we make, made the decision, we knew exactly the decision we were making. I chose ACN for this very reason, for the very thing Mr. Thomas is doing. We chose ACN because we changed people's lives. There's no need to be in a business just to make money. Money's the easiest thing to get. Money's everywhere. All you got to do to make money is raise your value in the marketplace. That's easy to do. So if that's mm -hmm. easy to do, then what should I really be doing? Oh, do things that attract money to you without work. And that's changing people's lives. Amen. You know, I'm, I'm sure, Mr. Dwight, we, uh, we, we've had people come at us with different MLMs. I've had senior oh. vice presidents leave, RVPs leave. I have people that done hired things in network marketing. Try. I'm not going nowhere. I, I'm into the wheels fall off. I'm unbelievable. I've had friends. That leave. I, I'm a, hey, I, I ain't going nowhere. I'm still here. What's that song by Ellen John? I'm still standing. <laughs> uh, absolutely. 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 Give us a few words in closing, sir, because this has been a lot lightning conversation. I love how you got out of the house and got to your favorite spot where you could just mellow out and just look at the water and just give us some wisdom. Where's the wisdom from a wise man that I no, hold no, out no. respect for? Let's go to work, guys. You, you, you won't have a better time than you have right now. The, the, the truth is for AC, a business like ACN, this is the easiest time to build. You, you won't find a time easier than now. 
So if you if you want to create wealth, the time to do it is right now. All of the planets are aligned, and they're aligned in your favor. It, it, it's as if God has said, okay, it's time to create wealth for a massive number of people that otherwise would not have had the opportunity. And now it's it's in your hands. But I, I, I love this story. God don't he, he don't build houses and chairs. He 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 grows trees. That's what he does. If you want a chair, oh, yeah. you you need to go cut that tree down <laughs> and, and build your head and and have an idea and begin to fashion that wood into a chair. So he, he, he doesn't do everything for it. There's a part of it that you got to contribute. But he'll give you all the material you need. And so this environment that we live in right now is all the material you need to use this opportunity to create whatever life you desire. That's where we are today. And if you want a house, go out there and cut that tree down. You want the table? Go out there and cut that tree down. Absolutely. You want firewood? When it's cold outside, you don't go say, "Give me the wood that I go get." The go cut the tree down. Yep. There he gave go. it a material, like he said to Moses, "What's that in your hand?" Lord have mercy. What's that in your hand? <laughs> what's that? And most people don't know what's in their hands. Yeah, it was a stick. It's a snake. No, what's that in your hand? Wow, we can go deep on this. All right. <laughs> Hey, folks, can we show Mr. Williams how much we appreciated his wisdom today? His lot. I mean, he just, he just, my God. Woo! Man, I, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. Man, thank you so much for, you know, it's it's so incredible to have you on it and share with people a different side because you're for me. But it's almost like you tell your child, don't touch the stove. They'll touch it anyway. Does somebody else say, don't touch it? They're oh, okay. So sometimes it's good to hear from a different perspective like yourself versus me, that way they catch it sometime better. And maybe now they'll go to work. And then like he says, go to what? Go to work. Go to work. That's what we gotta do. And like I said, never in our life have the world has, like think about it. God has stopped the world, the heavens is open, the stars are all lined up. And he's saying to you, get to work, get to work, get to work, get to work. Because we have 320 million people in the United States alone that are looking for you. And you're not gonna get them till you get them. So tonight, 6 o'clock p.m. Pacific Coast time. On here again tonight, I'll be doing the 1 through 10. And then Miss Ismail is going to do a quick start training right after that. And we're going to get people on here. We've got a couple testimonies lined up. But get people on this call tonight. Every Tuesday and Thursday night, 6 o'clock Pacific Coast time. Everything we're doing, Friday, 6 o'clock. Saturday, 6 o'clock. Sunday, product training, 6 o'clock. Everything we do is 6 o'clock. Because the schedule changed, because ACNs changed. So we're at 6 o'clock, Tuesday and Thursdays, right here. Get guests on. Friday night, happy hour to Al. Get guests on, uh, friends on. Saturday, I'm doing a leadership, part two of what I did, part one last week. It was a blessing. Sunday night, product training. We actually have Mr. Bree Clemens be doing product training with Spear. They will be on here with us. And next week, uh, we got, ooh, I can't tell you about Nick. We got some great things. Anyway, that's our schedule. That's our schedule. So Tuesday, Thursday, right back here. Tomorrow morning, we'll be right back tomorrow morning with Mr. Matt Matt, uh, Matt Sievers. Thursday, Mr. D uh, Sir, uh, um, um, Dean Durali. And Friday, Mr. Nell will be with us. What not to say. No, no, well, try not to try. So what not to say. Not what to say, but what not to say. All right, with that, can we give Mr. Williams one more hand? Thank you for a wonderful bless. And yes, today was recorded. It was recorded. We all recorded. So God bless you all. Have a great day. Be safe and get out there talk to people. And don't forget the Corporation ACN has meetings on every couple hours. And we'll see all of you back with a guest tonight at 6 o'clock p.m. Pacific Coast time. Myself and Miss Boss Lady, Miss Ismail, will be back tonight to help you build your business. God bless you. Have a great day.